Um, last Sunday, we lit the first Advent candle, which symbolizes hope. It represents the expectation, thought, and anticipation of the coming Messiah. And today, we'll light the second candle, which represents peace. This reminds us of Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem, that even in the midst of tensions and crisis, still the peace of God remains in them and in their journey. The peace of God allows us to look at others through heaven's eyes and help guide the world to see God's here and the not yet here kingdom. Peace from God, biblical peace. Shalom allows us to trust in God's promises. Through restful, tranquil faith, despite the dark, scary world around us. One of the hallmarks of the Christian's Christmas story is when the angels appear to the shepherds and proclaim, Peace on earth. Lift up your heads, all ye people, sing and rejoice, for now is the holy season of Advent. For the Lord our God said, I will come and dwell in your midst. And yes, our faithful God is coming to us. Now in this season of waiting, we listen. Now in the season of Advent, we wait for the faithful word to speak of good good news to us now in the waiting and listening we watch for the faithful spirit in moving among us all together peace, peace of god all, peace to all who enter, enter here peace, peace this day, day every day in, in the, the name, name of jesus christ, christ. amen, amen. Praise the Lord, all the saints, 
All together, let us pray our prayer of approach. You could have fed us with better bitterness, O Advent God, but you chose to serve us with the bread of heaven. You could hand us a hot cup of your tears, but you touch us with the cup of hope to our lips. All the stars fall down to shine the way for you. Babe of Bethlehem, as the powers of the world tremble at your approach. You tear open our hardened hearts so that you can come and live with us forever. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When we are in captivity with sin and despair, God offers to set us free. When we are lonely and discouraged, the Holy Spirit is our comforter, pointing us beyond ourselves. Come now, everyone, and let us seek his forgiveness, help, and healing that only Jesus can provide. Let us now come to God and say our prayer of confession together. All together, have mercy upon us, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the richness of your tender mercies, blot out our offenses. Wash us thoroughly from our wrongdoings and cleanse us from, from our sins. For we acknowledge our offenses and our sin is ever before us. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is the message we have heard from God and proclaim to you, that God is light and in God there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus the Son cleanses us from all sin. People of God rejoice for you have now the right spirit in you. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Amen.
Good afternoon and welcome to the 5 o'clock worship service of the UCCP Ellenwood Malati Church or the Vesper service. We welcome those who are with us through the Zoom room and those who are with us through our Facebook live streaming pages. Welcome Paul for this afternoon's worship service. We'd like to thank the leadership of the members of the Supetran family. That's Elder Bernard, Atilali, and their daughter Leila Bernice. Of course, meron pa po silang anak na si GB, but he is not with them in their home in Makati. Thank you very much for your leadership. Of course, Elder Bernard is a incumbent member of the Board of Elders, and Atilali is a volunteer with our CEN and also with our Christian Witness and Service. Leila, a, man, a member of our CYF, is also a member of our Ellenwood Chamber Orchestra. And welcome back nga pala sa inyo after more than a month of being away. This is the first Sunday of December. So officially po talaga, Paskong Pasko na. If you've noticed, the climate seems to have gotten a lot colder in the past few days. And this first Sunday of December is also our second Sunday in Advent. And this being the first Sunday, we shall be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion. So I hope that you have prepared your communion elements at home because we will be doing po our uh, communion, the Last Supper uh, communion ceremony after our sermon. So please prepare your communion elements. We'd like to extend our thanks for those who have generously taken part in our Thanksgiving offering. As of last count, according to our cashiers, we have received so far 121,500 pesos. This amount po will be shared between two churches for the Mindoro Associate Conference for a chapel that they are setting up in a uh, Mangyan community and also for UCCP Angono in Rizal. If you still wish to include your Thanksgiving offering to this amount, just make sure that you properly identify your transfers as part of the Thanksgiving offering. I am actually here in Quezon City. Instead of our, my usual place in Paranaque, we took the time to visit uh, Elder Gani who celebrated her his 87th birthday yesterday. And also among the other officers who will be celebrating their birthday po this week, uh, on the 10th, Deacon Cynthia Castillo will be celebrating her birthday. Of course, we encourage you to take a look at the list of birthday celebrants for the whole week for this first week of December so that you may take the time to greet other Ellen Wooders a happy birthday. Also from our Vesper worship attendees, we'd like to extend anniversary greetings to Doc Acer and Corito Acosta who will be celebrating their anniversary on the 8th. For those who knew our Brother Mel Morales, we'd like to inform you that he has passed away last Wednesday and the UCCP Cosmopolitan held a service for him yesterday. If you do know the Moraleses, kindly extend your uh, condolences and words of comfort to them at this time. Also, for those who may know uh, the family of Samuel Aguila, Samuel Aguila passed on on Thursday. So also keep these families in prayer as they uh, journey through this new phase in life and as they cope with the sorrow of losing a loved one. Of course, this December we have different uh, Christmas activities. If you get a copy of our Ellen Wooder, we have already outlined the dates that are relevant or the dates that you need to remember for the celebration 
of our Christmas season. On December 21, 22, and 23, we shall have a Simbang Gabi. On the 24th, we shall be sending uh, guides for home family worship. And on December 25, that is a Saturday, we shall have a worship service at 9.30 in the morning. Of course, virtual pa rin po ang mga services na ito. On the 31st, that is New Year's Eve, we shall have a worship service at 8 in the evening. Of course, that's just one worship service. And Saturday, New Year's Day, we shall be sending out a family devotion guide, of course, earlier in the week, for you to begin the year in family devotion. Hindi naman po ito kailangang miembro lamang ng inyong pamilya. Those who are with you in your, in your homes, members of your household, please uh, include them in your time of worship and devotion during this Christmas season. Of course, aside from the Ellen Wooder, which has the announcements of the activities of the church, and also, of course, uh, bank details of the bank accounts of the church for you to transfer your tithes and offerings, we also encourage you to download a copy of our In Focus Intercessor, which is a daily prayer guide for the whole week. And this is actually prepared by Sister Tex Avante. She prepares this every week so that the whole church may join together in prayer. Something that you will find new in our website, of course, every, every weekend we post on our website the different worship guides, the choral anthems, and the hymns and responses. But one thing that will be added on our website will be the announcement for baptism guidelines. So we will outline there that we will be scheduling uh, baptisms. But please, the important part of this announcement is that for you to get in touch with any of the pastors to either send an email to info at ellenwood.com or you will find in the announcement the numbers of the MGD phone. So kindly send them a text so that you can first schedule a counseling appointment. So we like to inform all parents who may have children to be baptized do not yet schedule the baptism date itself. Unahin po muna natin yung counseling schedule. Yun po muna ang atin pong gawa ng appointment. So please first make an appointment for your counseling. Then together with the pastor, you will set the schedule for the baptismal ceremony. Again, for the other announcements, please take time to look at our Ellen Wooder visit our website, visit the different Facebook pages that we have. There is a uh, for the online worship. We also have one for the Tagalog service, for the Visayan service, and of course also for the Vesper service. Brothers and sisters, let us prepare our hearts and minds as we continue in worship and as we come before the throne of God's grace in prayer, as we are led in prayer by Elder Bernard. Good afternoon po to everyone. Before I lead the church in prayer, I would like us to uh, remember this special day, December 5, uh, which happens to be the 320th death anniversary of uh, one of the greatest classical composers, also, who also made compositions of great uh, sacred music is none other than Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who wrote a very beautiful song titled Exultate Jubilate, which is a great thanksgiving to the creator of music. It says, rejoice, sing out with joy, O you blessed souls. O you souls, O you blessed souls, rejoice, sing out with joy. With those words and immortal lyrics, let us come to the, let us come humbly before God 
in community as prayer. We come to you, dear God, with contrite hearts and cheerful spirits at this time of the day as we conclude the first day, the first Sunday of this month, how time flies and we can only look back at how you have guided us, you have provided us, provided for us and shielded us from danger, from the virus for the past 11 months. We thank you for the many blessings, big and small, you have, guide, you have given us, you have endowed us for the past year. We can only look back with thanksgiving and praise for the many opportunities you have, you have given us to be blessing to others. We thank you for the opportunity to be thankful by sharing our material blessings during the Thanksgiving Sunday to help and empower and enable our smaller church church partners. We thank you and praise you for the many challenges that come our way, which, which, which make us and help us refine ourselves even as silver and gold is refined. This evening, as we come before you as a community of faith, remind us always Wherever we are, the prayer or the prophecy of the prophet Isaiah, that we prepare a highway for our God through our deeds, through our thought, thoughts, through our collective action, prayer, particularly at these trying times in our lives. In these trying times of the pandemic, in these trying times of political polarization because of the forthcoming electoral exercise. We thank you because of the declining number of COVID cases and for how you have shield, shielded us from this virus. We also commend, commend to your hands the forthcoming activities this December and may we not be busy or preoccupied with the temporal things of buying gifts, decorating our homes, planning for family gatherings, office parties and the likes. But more importantly, rekindle in us how we can celebrate and observe more meaningfully the meaning of Advent in our own little way. That we prepare a desert, a highway for our King. Guide us, be with us, for the rest of this evening and this worship service that we may me we may meaningfully encounter you through song through prayer and through collective action of our community here at ellenwood malate church and beyond we pray all of this through jesus christ who taught us this this prayer that we should pray in this manner together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead, a, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen and Amen.
For our Old Testament reading, let us turn our Bibles to the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. That's Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 to 4, which says, The Lord answers, the Lord Almighty answers, I will send my messenger to prepare the way for me. Then the Lord you are looking for will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger you long to see will come and proclaim my covenant. But who will be able to endure the day when he comes? Who will be able to survive when he, when he appears? He will be like strong soap, like a fire that, that refines metal. He will come to judge like one who refines and purifies silver, as a metal worker refines silver and gold. So the Lord's messenger will purify the priests so that they will bring to the Lord the right kind of offerings. Together, then the offerings which the people of Judah and Jerusalem bring to the Lord will be pleasing to him as they used to be in the past. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. For our New Testament reading, let us turn our Bibles to the Gospel of our Lord according to the Apostle Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. That's Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. It was the 15th year of the rule of Emperor Tiberius. Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea. Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip was ruler of the territory of Itorea and Taconitis. Lysanias was the ruler of Abilene, and Annas and Caiaphas were high priests. At the time the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. So John went throughout the whole territory of the Jordan River, preaching, Turn away from your sins and be baptized, and God will forgive your sins. As it is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, someone is shouting in the desert, Get the road ready for the Lord. Make straight a path for him to travel. Every valley must be filled up, every hill and mountain leveled off. The winding roads must be made straight, and the rough paths made smooth. The whole human race will see God's salvation. The Lord has already blessed us with the reading of his word. Let us continue our meditation by listening to the anthem of the choir, of the choir 
and the preaching of the word by Reverend Bobby Alguso.
I forgot to acknowledge that our choir for today is the Covenant Choir. Thank you very much for that anthem. They are led by Gabriel Frias. Get ready, get ready, get ready for the coming of the Lord. Sing praises, shout glory, get ready for the coming of the Lord. If those lines sound familiar, they are the opening lines of a youth choir cantata back in the late 80s or early 90s. I don't really remember because I don't think I had the opportunity to participate in the cantata itself. But I think I was able to sing one of the, one of the songs in that cantata for an anthem. Though the Old Testament reading from Malachi does not say it, our readings have a common theme, and that is to get ready. The manner of preparation may be approached differently and may be defined and understood from a variety of perspectives. But make no mistake, it is through Jesus Christ that we see God's salvation. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come dwell within us. Come dwell amongst us. Break us open and make us new creations. Amen. Malachi is commonly used as a reference when dealing with the topic of tithes and offerings, especially in chapter 3. If you read verse 10, it says, Bring the full amount of your tithes to the temple, so that there will be plenty of food there. Put me to the test, and you will see that I will open the windows of heaven and pour out on you in abundance all kinds of good things. However, when this topic is tackled and that verse is isolated, it then becomes a discussion of purely financial responsibilities. But the opening verses of chapter 3, actually all the way to verse 5, as part of our reading, paints for us a better picture of what the prophet is pointing us to. Malachi alerts us to the purpose of the messenger. The messenger you long to see will come and proclaim my covenant. This verse by itself is good news. The messenger you long to see. It was what God's people were waiting for through years of torment and struggle. But is this a case of be careful what you wish for? Because this good news is followed by a warning. But who will be able to endure the day when he comes? Who will be able to survive when he appears? He will be like a strong soap, like a fire that refines metal. He will come to judge like one who refines and purifies silver. When the messenger comes, will we be able to survive when he appears? Because we will have to be cleaned. We will have to be purified. The illustration of being refined like metal is quite a familiar image to a lot of people. When metal is put to fire and becomes molten liquid, the impurities separate and rise to the surface where it is scooped out and removed from the melted metal. The other illustration is the use of strong soap. In the King James Version, it mentions fuller's soap. To translate what the Hebrew Bible literally says, to wash by treading using alkali, to wash by treading. The term fuller soap 
refers to the work of cleaning and washing sheep's wool. Yung bagong shear pa lang from the sheep. By treading on it, so aapakapakan, or beating on it while using a harsh soap to make it white. The person doing the washing is called a fuller. This illustrates the hard and harsh work needed to prepare wool for textiles and garments use. Either way, the refiner's fire or strong soap, the common imagery is to bring out the impurities from inside, to bring out the impurities from inside of us so that it is removed entirely. This impurity is sin. This is the very refrain of the preaching of John the Baptist we find in our gospel reading from the account of Luke. Turn away from your sin. But unlike the pronouncement in Malachi that came with a warning, John the Baptist's message comes with an assurance. Turn away from your sins and be baptized and God will forgive your sins. If you're looking for more explicit instructions on turning away from sin, let us go back to our reading from Malachi and read verse 5 from chapter 3. The Lord Almighty says, I will appear among you to judge and I will testify at once against those who practice magic, against adulterers, against those who give false testimony, those who cheat employees out of their wages, and those who take advantage of widows, orphans, and foreigners, against all who do not respect me. It is interesting that an Old Testament text can have such a well-defined and encompassing warning to the sins that we engage in today. Magic refers to the practice of sorcery and witchcraft. Nako, napakadami po niyan yung mga nanghuhula. <laughs> and sometimes claiming to speak with the spirits of those who are dead. Adultery does not need an explanation. False testimony. This we are well acquainted with today. Who would have known that modern technology would give rise to widespread lying and misinformation? Labor relations are also highlighted in the responsibility of employers to be fair in dealings with their employees. The next group are the more commonly abused lot during that time, the marginalized, the widows, the orphans, the foreigners. But the common theme here is a warning to those who take advantage of others. The King James Version takes note of verse 5 in its translation from the Hebrew Bible by viewing sin in the light of oppression and defrauding others. So, panluloko. These warnings reveal how people willfully take advantage of the plight of others or take advantage of those who have less in life. In some cases, to even abuse the trust of those who rely on you. Those who rely on you for a livelihood, those who rely on you for shelter, sometimes we take, we, we misuse that trust and abuse that trust. In our sinfulness, it has become but natural for people to make sure that they are always on top. Laging dapat nakakalamang at hindi magpapalugi o maiisahan. It is not just that we are looking out for self-interest, but we are not even bothered if self-interest comes at the expense of other people. Pag tayo nalugi, tayo galit na galit. Pag tayo ay naisaan, galit na galit tayo. Gusto natin tayo lagi ang nakaangat. And even if that success 
comes at the expense of others, okay lang. Wag lang tayo ang maisahan. The end of verse 5 reveals why we engage in sin. And what did it say? We do not respect God. And yet our sinfulness, our disrespect for God, has not hindered God, hindered God to find a way for us to be redeemed. John the Baptist assures us God will, God will forgive. Turn away from your sins, God will forgive. But God will not only forgive, God will save. John ushers in the beginning of Jesus' ministry and the assurance that the whole human race will see God's salvation. Are you ready? Are you ready? The reading from Luke quotes the prophet Isaiah by saying, Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him to travel. Every valley must be filled up. Every hill and mountain leveled off. The winding roads must be made straight and the rough paths made smooth. Obviously, this is not to be taken literally and not really a matter of preparing the roadway. But my reflection on these verses have to do with approach and preparedness. Preparedness as the valleys illustrate voids in our lives. A sense of emptiness that needs to be filled. Hills and mountains could very well be our sense of pride and importance which needs to be leveled off. These illustrations point to the duality of who we are as people. We are too proud to admit our sinfulness and our need for rescue. And yet, there is an emptiness in our hearts that cannot seem to be satisfied by worldly pleasure and treasure. We know that even in the face of success, there is an aching void, a hollowness that we feel in our hearts. Our admission our, of our need for rescue sets us on the journey towards repentance and forgiveness, to turn away from sin and to receive God's forgiveness. Preparing the road, making it straight and smooth is our readiness to receive Jesus as the Savior who redeems us from sin. Brothers and sisters, every year as we celebrate Advent, it is an opportunity to reflect upon the year that has passed and to take stock and ask ourselves, have we prepared ourselves for the coming again of our Lord? Two Sundays ago, our theme dealt with the end times, and Jesus himself says that it is not for us to know when this will be, but to prepare ourselves again addresses the reality of our lives even as believers. We are sinners. Even with the best and noblest intentions, we find ourselves taking part in the world's deception, in the world's abuses, in the world's lies, in the world's insincerity. We are part of the problem in a continuing saga that defines our weakness. But in our weakness, it brings to light the grace of God in our weakness. The grace of God is seen in Jesus Christ. It is this love. It is this love that we return to. It is this love that saves us. It is this love that gives us life. As we partake of the symbols of this love, may we sincerely come before God and heed His call to turn away from sin 
so that we may be saved. Let me close with the words of the Apostle Paul from the selection of the lectionary in his letter to the Philippians, chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, and it reads, I pray that your love will keep on growing more and more together with true knowledge and perfect judgment so that you will be able to choose what is best. Then you will be free from all impurity and blame on the day of Christ. Your lives will be filled with the truly good qualities which only Jesus Christ can produce for the glory and praise of God. Amen. The one who loves us to the end has gathered us. We are his disciples at the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us come with sincere gratitude as we honor Christ's invitation to participate in his table above all others. As we gather in his table, we will know cleansing and forgiveness. We are empowered here to live as Christ's disciples. Through the broken bread and the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ offers us. Therefore, let us reach out for the blessings that Jesus offers as we seek also to pass them on to others in Jesus' name. From the words of the Apostle Paul, this I say unto you, for I received from the Lord the teachings that I passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took a piece of bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is God's new covenant sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. This means that every time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us take some moments of self-reflection before we partake of the Lord's Supper. Let us pray. As we come together, O Lord, in your table, allow us to partake with you these elements which symbolizes your body and your precious blood. We ask you, O Lord, that you now consecrate and bless the bread and the wine as we use them for this purpose. Likewise, bless those who will partake in this Holy Communion. 
Amen. At this point, brothers and sisters, can you pass around uh, the bread or the symbol of the bread symbolizing the body of Jesus Christ to those who are with you in your homes? Jesus said, This is my body broken for you. Take, eat in remembrance of me. Jesus also said, This cup is the new covenant sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. Let us say our prayer. Thank you, God, for renewing us at your table by the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. You touch our deepest needs and called us to a life shared in memory and hope. Send us forth with courage and joy in the name of Jesus Christ, that we too may become bread and peace for one another and the world. Amen. Through Christ, let us continually praise God and share what we have. For such sacrifices are pleasing in God's sight. Let us therefore present with joy our offerings of commitment and support for the work of Christ's church.
loving and merciful God, we respond to you with joy as we lift up our tithes and offerings. The opportunity to share is a blessing for which we are very thankful. Your generous provision for our needs prompts us to be generous in return. Accomplish your purposes, we pray, through these gifts and in our lives. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us together recite Article 4 of the UCCP Statement of Faith. Together, we believe that the Holy Bible is a faithful and inspired witness of God's self-revelation in Jesus Christ and in history to illumine, guide, correct, and edify believers in their faith and witness. Let us pray. Indeed, O Lord, we proclaim, Come, come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. Yes, O Lord, we shout this every Christmas season, but are we really ready? Are we ready, O Lord, for your reign in our lives? Are we ready to turn away from our sin? Are we ready to live our lives in your love? Are we ready to surrender? O oh Lord, we find ourselves being brought, O oh Lord, by the whims of this world, tossed to and fro. But, O oh Lord, it is the good news of Jesus Christ that has set us free, that should open our eyes, O oh Lord, to your truth so that we may discern, so that we may teach, so that we may preach the good news of your salvation in Jesus Christ. And may our lives, O Lord, be living proof of your grace. Forgive us, O Lord, when we turn away from our responsibility and continue, dear Lord, to wallow in sin. We know, O Lord, we are weak, but we know, O Lord, in you we can find strength. And in you we will truly find how the Holy Spirit will lead us through each day. That even as we face, O Lord, the challenges of the week that is to come, we will feel, O Lord, your nearness. We will feel your hand upon us. 
guiding us, protecting us, leading us, O Lord, to your light. And may we, O Lord, learn to obey. Search our hearts, O Lord, so that we may lay before you our prayers. Even for those, O Lord, who continue to need your healing hand to be upon them. Even for those, O Lord, who feel anxiety and worry, overwhelm them. O Lord, we pray for your strength. We pray, O Lord, for clarity of vision. We pray, O Lord, for your peace and comfort. We pray, O oh Lord, that we may come to know the joy that only you can give, the joy of living in your love, the joy of sharing, O oh Lord, this love with others, the joy of journeying together as a family of faith. Be with us, O oh Lord, we pray, that our preparation and celebration of Christmas is not just, O oh Lord, a seasonal activity, but a truly life-changing experience. And may we come to realize how each day, O oh Lord, you are working, molding us, transforming us, so that we may become more like Christ. O oh Lord, may you reign in us forever. May you rule in our hearts. And by thine mercy and grace, raise us, O Lord, to thy glorious throne so that we may be with you, praising you, enjoying, O Lord, life in your kingdom, life in your love. As we bring a close, O oh Lord, to this worship service and face the week that is ahead, dismiss us, O oh Lord, with your benediction. And now may the blessings of God the Father and the love of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>